SQL has been the de facto language for working with databases for many years. With the rise of NoSQL databases, this began to change. And yet, as those databases matured, users began to realize that they needed many of the richer features of SQL. The result is that over time, the NoSQL databases have had to incorporate SQL-like features. Many database users went as far as abandoning SQL, only to reintroduce it later when they realized that NoSQL couldn't serve all of their needs. This has resulted in a paradigm known as polyglot persistence. Users practicing polyglot persistence understand that certain jobs work best with certain databases. Sometimes what you need is a transactional database with rich querying capabilities. In those cases, a SQL database such as CockroachDB would be your tool of choice. But to really understand where SQL is an effective tool, we first need to understand the language and what it can do. Application programming languages often work with hierarchies of objects. This is the basis of object-oriented programming. Meanwhile, SQL databases usually work with data in the form of tables and relationships between those tables. They are known as relational databases. The difference between these two models is known as the object relational impedance mismatch. If not managed properly, it can lead to problems such as inefficient database usage or overly complex code. Translating between the two paradigms is the primary focus of a class of tools known as object relational mappings or ORMs. An ORM is a tool that is designed to take the object representation of an object-oriented language and translate it into the relational model that underlies a SQL database. The idea is that an application developer should be able to focus on writing code in the language of their choice. It is the ORM's job to ensure that code can be translated into the corresponding SQL that will allow the data to be persisted in the database. The community around these ORMs has grown quite large and popular. Unfortunately, the result is that people have, in many cases, forgotten how to use SQL. But if the ORM is doing all of the SQL work for us, then why should we bother learning the language at all? Unfortunately, even though the ORM can handle a lot of the heavy lifting for us, it can't handle everything. Most experts suggest not to let the ORM define the database schema. Although ORMs might be capable of doing it, they often create schemas that are suboptimal. Instead, schemas on indexes are usually defined up front using handwritten SQL code. Furthermore, the queries that the ORM generates aren't always optimized. For simple queries, they're usually pretty good, but as the task becomes more complex, the ORM may create queries that are inefficient. In these cases, queries may need to be manually written or an index may need to be added in order to improve efficiency. Even when the ORM is working perfectly, there are times when queries need to be manually executed against the database. It may be because a manager has made a request for information that isn't normally part of the application, or a production problem may need to be debugged or corrected. Whatever the case, sometimes we have to get our hands dirty in the SQL code. Without at least a basic understanding of SQL code, we will be unable to implement the pieces of our application that the ORM doesn't handle or doesn't handle well. We won't be able to do the behind the scenes work in the database that comes with running a production application. In a modern DevOps environment, the developer is often the database administrator as well. We may not have the option to reach out to an expert for help. Understanding basic SQL becomes an important tool in our toolbox. In this course, you will take a series of business requirements and translate them into your relational database. You will see how simple code objects can translate into a relational table through SQL. You will learn how to create simple databases, tables, and indexes, how to write data to a table and read it back, and how to update and delete data from the table. At each stage, you will be given the context of how this SQL code might be applied in a real application, even if it is backed by an ORM.